It's good to meet you, dude. I, I, yeah. I, uh, I don't know much about you. I heard good things. And so, um, I mean, I'm really looking forward to this, dude. Yeah, well, I really appreciate you taking some time to chat with me. Um, I, just to give you some background, I, you know, I met you through Jess or Jess, for, you know, sent me your name. And, and um, uh, I worked for Barbell Shrug for a number of years. Okay. Um, and I, I'm like, oh, I'm a web developer by trade. So uh, that's what I do to, for a living pretty much. And nice. I'm, also, I'm also a gym owner. But um, anyway, through working at Barbell Shrug and owning a gym and all this stuff, I've met all these great people and made all these great connections. And I was, man, I, there's so many good conversations out there to have. You know, yeah. why don't I just start connecting with people and talking about how they got where they are today and like tell their stories, you know, because uh, I, I just like hearing them. You know? Yeah, that's very cool. So anyway, uh, Jess uh, uh, has hooked me up with several really good people. So I'm happy. Yeah. That I'm happy that you're here talking to me. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. I'm, I'm excited it. about it. I uh, I've done a lot of different stuff in my life, um, and you know, I was in the army when I was younger. Got out, started coaching, and then dived into. Well, I started as an athlete, then started coaching, and then sort of dived into the business ownership realm right. and just kind of been on that that path ever since you know yeah i want to talk about that i'm excited because i went through your webinar today and um we have the i on your website i, th I see a bunch of stuff about productivity and a lot of things that you're interested in that i'm interested in so i got a lot of nice. stuff to talk about but uh, uh i want to start with uh where are you where are you in the world oh i'm in uh california southern california um uh, like south orange county I've been here for, uh, let's see, how long have I been here? Probably nine years. I don't even think about that very much, but I, I got pulled down here. A buddy owned a gym. And uh, the, I don't know if you ever heard of the NLI. The NLI was a competition series, and I kind of got pulled down here for that, and then I just ended up staying and never left. Okay, what is, it, what is, the, what is NLI? What does that stand for? It, it stood for Next Level Invitational. It was one of the very first uh, CrossFit sort of, you know, functional fitness competitions um, we started in 2010 and it was like a local competition for not just elite athletes, but for all levels. So like, you know, intermediate and we really sort of paved the way for that um, in the early, early days. And then uh, I ended up buying the gym from Lamar who owned Next Level Invitational. And that's kind of where I got my start with, uh, with, with coaching and, and gym ownership and stuff. Well, let's go back a little bit more. How did you get end up? How did you get in the army? So uh, after I graduated high school, I um, basically just went straight into the army. I was looking for, I don't know really why. I mean, it was after uh, um, the uh, 9 11 and all that sort of stuff. So there was an element of that, but it was, it was also adventure and I kind of wanted to get away. And so I signed up to go into special forces, which they had like this special program. Uh, and I just go, went through all this hard training and then I ended up getting kicked out of that for a couple of reasons <laughs> because I, I had too much of an ego and I was doing some bad stuff. So I got kicked out of that. Then I ended up going to uh, sniper school and was deployed as a sniper team leader for a few years before getting out. But it was the military for me was uh, a huge learning opportunity in terms of uh, figuring out how to play the game. And, you know, I, I was really butting up against a lot of stuff authority wise for many, many years before I realized that, you know, you just kind of have to go with the flow. And I learned a lot of stuff and I, I've taken a lot of what I've learned into the world with me. And it's, it was a super valuable experience. Right. So, so you, I guess you're saying before you went into the military, you were kind of not, you know, yeah, not as. I didn't have very much. Yeah, I was just. I didn't have very much direction and um, I was ho very hot headed. I was even a little hot headed in the army, uh, but it, it calmed me down. Um, just the structure and all that sort of stuff really kind of set me straight. And it, right. it helped, it sense. really did help, help a lot. And so you, you got out of the army and did you, did, did you, were you into CrossFit or were, were you just doing functional fitness or like, how did you make a transition from the army to that? Gym yeah. So, program? Uh, probably when I was uh, 19 or so, I was in the army for about a year and a half. I started, I had this moment of like personal disgust 
<laughs> where I was like, we were scrubbing something and I looked up and I saw like this reflection of my like little body and it just like, <laughs> it, like hit me and I'm like, ah. and from that moment on, literally from that moment on, I, I never stopped lifting weights. It was like from that day, I just started working out, trying to get bigger and stronger. Uh, and I became obsessed with um, getting stronger. I got way into abbreviated strength training, uh, learning all of like the fundamentals of squatting and all of that. And then a few years later when I was deployed, um, I was exposed to CrossFit and I saw all these guys that were not only stronger than I was, but also were fast and they could run. And I'm like, it just blew my mind. I couldn't believe like how it was so appealing to me on so many levels. I, I just immediately started doing uh, fitness. I'd also gotten a little bit into Ola thing um, before that. And I just kind of mixed her. So when I found CrossFit, it was like this blending of all this cool stuff. And I just completely fell in love with it. And then that was at the tail end of my deployment. And I got out maybe eight or nine months after that. So I was like at the height of my zeal. Like I was super excited and I immediately went, got my level one and then just started coaching at uh, Team CrossFit Academy in Monrovia under um, Eric LeClaire. And so uh, that was then a whole journey of, of learning how to coach and, you know, going through all of the, you know, learning all the progressions. And I did that for many years. Um, at the time I was primarily an athlete too, in my mind, like my identity wise was much right. more athlete than I was coach. Uh, but it slowly morphed. And then in 2011, um, when I was like midway through my, my athlete, like games, dreams, I ruptured my Achilles just, oh, man. just totally blew it up in the open doing box jumps and it it um, it derailed me it really made me reassess a lot of like the direction of what I was doing like what you know I'm thinking I thought that I was invincible type of thing you know like I'm never gonna get hurt I'm gonna freaking crush it and then here I am hobbling around for like eight months or whatever um, well, that was that was pretty early in the in the open. Did you say 2011? Yeah, it was 2011. Oh, that, that was I, the I was, first open, right? I guess it was the first. Yeah, yeah. I think open. I think it was. It, yeah, it was. I decided so sectionals a couple years for the years before that. Uh, so yeah, like the that first open, it was just it was. Yeah, now that you're saying that, it's funny. I never even really thought about yeah, that. Yeah, I just remember sexual. because I started I started in 2009 working out, and that's when I started trying to get in shape or whatever. And so I remember the very first open. I'm pretty sure it was 2011. It was like the second or third workout, and I was oh, out. Man, was what a like, bummer! Oh, dude, I was I was just so distraught and depressed for so long, and I didn't know what I was gonna do. You know, like I didn't know all of my identity was laid in that. But it, it, I mean, honestly, it was a it was a it was a positive thing because it made me look at diversifying and figuring out and getting another skill set and. Right. Still, you always have the athletic stuff that can always be there, but you know, there's helping people and developing programs and doing all those sorts of things, coaching. It's a whole, it's a much more, you know, long-term, much more fulfilling thing. Yeah. And so, so then what did you do? Did you, what, what happened after you were injured? So I, that was 2011. Um, 2012 is when we actually bought the gym. So okay. I was with some business partners and we, we, so 2012 was my first year of gym ownership and me being injured really sort of pushed me in that direction. You know, I'm like, well, if I had never been injured, I probably wouldn't have gone that way. I would have been super hyper-focused on, on fitness and stuff. And so go down the path of, um, of gym ownership, but even for the, for the first two or three years of owning a gym, I was still, even though I had been injured, I was still really focused on the athlete identity, you right. know, so I wouldn't really be doing any business stuff. I'd be doing double workouts and, you know, the, well, just on my own. Right. I, I have a question or something we can come back to maybe, but that was really early on still in the CrossFit gym, gym owner um, area, you know, yeah. like, like you could, at, at that time you could, you could open a CrossFit gym and just think, man, I could just open a gym and this For is sure this is going to be easy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, you, no one knows anything. Right. No, it doesn't work that way anymore. Oh no, right. not so, at all. So, so at that time, were you, were you even concerned about opening a business or running? Not, a I, I, I look back I, and I'm sure a lot of entrepreneurs, business owners, I look back and I had no idea the risks or <laughs> any concept of any of that. I was just like, 
you know, we, we moved into a, into like an 8,000 square foot place. The rent was like eight or nine grand. Wow. It was like, we had to, we had to get people right away. And I had, I didn't even, it never even occurred to me that this was a, this was something that was sort of maybe a little bit risky. Um, but we just, we held out. And after three or four years, both my partners ended up moving on to other things. So then it was just me. And that was when my development really, really started was right. two or three years after that, I realized that, oh, wow, I got to figure some of this stuff out. And then 2016 is when we moved. I moved from my big spot into a smaller location. And that was right after I developed the level method. So I had the, I was in this really big spot. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. But I have always been obsessed with, uh, with program design, energy systems, progressions. You know, training was my, I've read every freaking book there is. I love that stuff. It's what I've been obsessed with for years. And so I was, I was always looking for a way to help regular or even me progress. Like, I want to know where I am in fitness and I want to know all those things. So I built the level method primarily for that reason, not really understanding what it would evolve into. Right. Right? Which is a, which is, it's totally different than the, 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 the training side. So in 2016, we, I moved to a smaller location and really used that location as a testing ground for all of these ideas and right. to, you know, help people progress and get them and all that. And so then for the past three and a half years, that's where I've been uh, really refining a lot of these processes. Mm -hmm. And I've in the past, probably three years specifically, I've just totally moved over into this much more business productivity of my obsessions and my thinking all around that stuff. And how do I refine and refine and refine? And that's sort of like, you know, that's where I live now. I'm thinking about that all the time, the same way as I used to think about fitness. And I'm sure anybody who's ever been, you know, anybody who's really interested in something understands that they just like, you know, just, it just is you know, consuming. Well, uh, stepping back again a little bit, uh, you, you mentioned your business partners had kind of went a different direction. It was just you by yourself. I heard you talking on another podcast about uh, living in a camper out back yeah. behind your gym. Was that, at what point was that? That was, so oh, that was 2012, 13, 14. No, no, this is 13, 14, 15. So um, my, my, I was, I've, I'm a frugal, like I, I've, I'm pretty, was more about frugality and minimalism and all these sorts of ideas, sort of as an excuse to minimize all of my expenses so I would be able to survive. There was that element of it. Um, but yeah, I lived in the, I lived in a van behind a little uh, class B behind my gym for probably two years. Where so, it was <laughs> so you were, you were living there and managing your gym by yourself, just doing everything, doing the programming, much. doing all, coaching all the classes and everything. Well, I, we had coaches, so I wasn't coaching all the classes. Um, we had a team of people that were, were uh, like helping and everything, but yeah, I was doing a lot of the work and totally stretched to my limit in, in thinking of like, how can I possibly do any more? And that, that, that feeling of like, I, I want to do more, but how do I do more was really what got me starting to study the whole productivity thing. Like, how do I, how do people do so much? You know, what do I have to do? And that's what took me down that, that road, you know, it's like the, the minimalism thing for me, it was a, a practice of, just being able to deal with less, like live with these values that like, it's not so much material, but it's the internal stuff. Um, and then after I went through that, it's like now having things and doing things, it's, it's totally okay. And I don't judge anybody. And I, I'm still on the minimal side, but I have moved on from that sort of phase. But yeah, it was a, it, that was a, a great experience. So what was it like um, when you, when you decided to move out of that 8,000 square foot facility into a different was that a strategic thing where you yeah. think, okay, I gotta, I'm gonna make this change. For me, it was like, the, my idea was, I had this giant place and there was so much waste. And this, this, it tied in a lot to like the efficiency and the frugality idea of this thing. We had an entire yoga studio upstairs that was unused didn't even get used and we had a couch up there and we just like nothing ever got, you know what I mean? It was like, I would do videos up there, but 
And so I, I, what my, how, my idea was, I wanted to go into a nice, a smaller spot and then just dial things in, like get all of the operations, get all of the systems working like a well-oiled machine. And if I can do that in a small spot, test out all these ideas, then if I do in the future want to move again to a bigger place, I can always do that. But getting that efficient machine was very you know, appealing to me, that idea. Right. And so you took, you kind of, you, obviously you were successful at doing all that. And so you took all these things that you figured out that worked and you just turned them into another product. Yeah, basically we we moved, we took all of the, I mean, we moved to a, a, a place that was tiny in comparison to where we were. And so it was like a, a little bit of a shock to people as we came in. How, know, many, member, how many members did you have? How many are you talking about? So we probably, we moved with uh, maybe a hundred, we probably lost 40 or something. Oh, wow. So, so it was, a, it was a pretty big, for a variety of reasons, people generally hate change, mm -hmm. right? They really do not like change in any way. So um, I wasn't as good uh, about framing it as I would be probably today, being able to, to frame it a little bit better. But um, yeah, it was, it, was a, it was fine from a, the perspective of what my goals were, which was to, like, we got to be, we're hammering down now, pedal to the floor around level method. Right. So everything was now built around level method. And so um, moving all of these changes were happening. So it was just sort of this uh, upheaval in all of that. Well, let's talk about level method a little bit then. Um, what's your what is it? What, what's your kind of pitch for what exactly like, it is? The, the easiest way to think of it is just like martial arts belts for fitness. Right. So the the technical aspects of it and the categories and all of those sorts of things that's one side um but really giving people clear objective goals is the biggest thing right so plugging regular people into fitness is a really important but it really just is martial arts belts so i can place people in in fitness and i can know exactly where they are and then i can help map out a game plan specific to them where they want to go what's their very next thing they need to work on What's the very next thing they need to focus on? And then in classes, um, doing programming that is, you know, scaled exactly to where they are. Right. <clears throat> so you, you, it, look, I, I, like I said, I went through the webinar and so I know a little bit about it, but yeah, I see the big poster that goes on the wall that has all the different, it's a big poster, by the way, it looks yeah. like, and it's got the colors and I guess you progress through all that. Right. And that is one piece of it. But so I guess you deliver programming as well. So yeah. You... So the level method, um, the the, pro, the the programming project is the most time consuming and the most intensive of all the projects we have, because it's extremely comprehensive. So, but yeah, there's so level method is the system. We have an app and it goes and it helps people see where they are. But then the programming is what goes day to day. And we have uh, slides that will go up on a TV and give five different versions of the workout and their breakout slides into the warm up oh, and wow. all the variations. And there's uh, coaching notes that have they're like 20 or 30 pages a week that we're writing so that the coaches know exactly all the steps of all the, the class and all the everything that you need to know. So that from a from it, what was an originally like sort of a side project, I was I never really got into the level method of my, I did not want to do gym programming. That was, I, I make that very clear with pretty much everybody. Cause I, if anybody's ever worked with gym owners around programming, it's difficult because everybody has a different community. And, and I, I did okay. it three or four years ago, maybe even longer than that. Five years ago, I did a, a stint in doing programming for gyms. And I was like, I never want to do that again. So when we opened up level method, I didn't want to do that, but it was requested so much and so often that we finally said yes. And that was the most painful like experience for the first eight months of the, the Legion programming. We just did everything wrong. We delivered it wrong. People didn't like it because we were, you know, everything was based around energy systems and the clients didn't like it. So it was basically getting whipped for eight months before we realized, oh, okay. And then we came up with a, a way and now we're, now it's operating and it's, it's streamlined and it's much better, but it was a very, it was an intensive and painful experience for sure. Well, I probably have more questions about that in a second, but how did, where was, when was the moment 
that you decided to do this, like to to start the the whole thing? Like, the, when did it spark to you that you go, man, I, I I should probably make a business out of this? It, I mean, it honestly happened gradually because so I had it in my gym, and uh, I I wanted to see if it would work because we there was I don't know if you remember um, there's some other level systems out there. Sure way way back from like you know 2004 or so 2006 or something and i tried to put those into my gym um that one into my gym but it didn't work it didn't catch so i wasn't sure that levels was even a viable idea and i had tried to build a level system many years ago mm -hmm. but it just sort of disintegrated after a certain point didn't work but then this time like a lot of things clicked for me so then when i put it into my gym i was really wanting to see if it would if it would work and it started to work and people were like checking the freaking board all the time and then they'd go back and then they'd check the board and then I'm like, oh damn, this is actually working. And so um, I, I, I have, I, since I've been doing this for many years, I, I reached out to some of my friends that also own gyms and they were the first ones that did it. So I went in, I did like a, a little, um, what we call like a, this a seminar, like two day seminar where we would go and I would walk them through everything. Eric Leclerc was one of the very first gyms where I first originally coached at. And um, we got it in there. And then very slowly, at first, we did only in-person integration. So this was like, you know, a two-day seminar at each place. We would go and I would spend two days going over the entire thing. All of the systems, energy systems, the way the categories work, how they were put together, the calibration, how every, why everything fits together, where we got all the information, everything. So it was really, really intensive. But after about 10 of those, uh, we realized that it was going to be a very, very slow growth, you know? So then that's when we developed our e-learning and that's, so it, it, I mean, it happened very gradually. There was no single moment where it was like, bam, it was like, oh, this is kind of working, working, working. You and then now we, stuff to it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Add stuff. Well, we need an e-learning. So then we developed the e-learning and then we're like, oh shit, we need to do all these different processes and to have in place so we're not manually setting up everybody's account that all happens automatically so it's building systems and doing all that sort of stuff which happened you know very gradually and you know through always through pain it's always through like somebody saying hey we got to do that and we're like oh okay well I guess we'll right. figure it out you know well who is we do you have a did you have a team always was it always just you in the beginning and yeah, then me my partner sean buck so sean and i opened uh the gym he was my original partner in the gym along with another guy that we we started there but sean actually he has a background in it and app development and that helps um yeah big time and so he worked for capital group for many years in the it department uh and then when we opened the gym, he was with the gym for a while, but then I don't know if you ever remember grid grid was like the, Oh yeah. 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 So Sean and his team developed all of the scoring system for grid. So oh, all wow. the live scoring, the thing and all that stuff. So when we obviously having his help for all of the app side and he's just a good, you know, very smart dude. That's where we kind of like partnered up on it. And then that's sort of like, since the beginning, it's been me and him. Wow. That's awesome. It really helps. Um, I, when I first, because of my backgrounds in IT, and I was an IT manager for so many years before I started working out, and that's when I, when I started working out at a CrossFit gym in Memphis, and the gym owner was Mike Bledsoe. He was like, "I need, I need somebody to, that knows how to fix this website." And I was like, "I know how to fix that website," you know. Yeah, that, and, that. and it just started this relationship where it's like all of a sudden I became the IT guy and here I am, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. totally. And that's, I'm, I mean, that you, that story is very similar to how it was with Sean. Sean, the gym that I bought uh, and across at NLP was owned by Lamar Smith. Sean was a member at Lamar's gym, built his website out. I was a coach at Lamar's gym and met Sean. <laughs> that's how we became friends. Yeah, you know awesome. what I mean? It's like yeah. this, this, uh, you know, seminal. Well, what, let's talk about what it looks like from, from a gym owner perspective so I like I mentioned that I went and signed up for your webinar and watched that and so you know if I go to the level method website and sign up what happens after after we watch the webinar you know and you, you have a one-on-one -on -one call what is that about and then what happens 
So the one-on-one -on -one call is really sort of seeing if it's a good fit and explaining all the primary questions. People like, how does it work when I implement? What do I have to do? And essentially, there are, there's a, a series of education. So the number one thing is going through the e-learning where you get a foundational understanding of what the level method is, how it works. Once it goes into your gym, then it's a matter of getting the coaches on board. This is extremely important. The coaches must understand what the, the purpose is. And the purpose is to help regular people plug into fitness, keep them safe, keep them progressing, you know, and getting the, the coaches to understand that first, getting their levels, and then getting an inner group of the influencers within the gym, getting their level. So you're getting like slowly from the core, from the inside out, you're, you're sort of saturating the community. Uh, and then you go through a, a gym wide implementation, which is the testing. So then in classes for like three weeks, you people come in and they do their tests. So we're getting initial levels. So then once everybody has their initial levels, once we have that, now that's set, we keep training. And then, you know, you can do it one of two ways, either do small tests here and there to have people level up, or we do like a gym wide uh, testing. We actually have a worldwide testing coming up. Um, for all of the Legion, all the level method gyms in September. So then we'll all sort of do three weeks together. Everybody's leveling up all over the place, excited and stuff. And then, yeah, then there's an opportunity for workshops and clinics and PT and all that sort of stuff from that. Nice. And is there an app? I'm sure there's an app um, you give to everyone. Yeah. So the app development is like one of the big projects. We have uh, a native app now for, um, well, so we just launched version two of Level Method, which is might be confusing, but this is a whole other, this is what the big projects have been for the past few months, um, is version one was the original calibration, the original, but after three years, we have way more data. So we have like 200,000 data points and we can see hot spots. We can see where right. people get bottled up and we know like, okay, well, we, it was too hard in this area and all that. So we now have smoothed it out and we have a new map version two, which is now uh, in development for a second app and all that. So that's, which is way, everything's way better and it's way faster and stuff. So it's, yeah, <laughs> it's a lot going on. Yeah. That's awesome. It, it's, it's, it sounds like a really good way to just keep your people engaged. Like I know you talk a lot about member retention or whatever, but like that is yeah. super important, <laughs> you know, yeah, and I mean, so one of the big questions, you know, when I got that I've always had as a coach is, and maybe with you too, when, when you got into fitness, you know, it's like, it almost consumes you where it's like, damn, I want to get better. I want to get uh, like, I want to learn. I want to find, but when I, when I was working with so many regular people, sometimes that doesn't happen. That bug doesn't get them. They're not like, uh, and it's so overwhelming. There's so many things to work on. And everything feels like they suck at it. They're like, I don't even know what to do. What the level method is doing is, is it's like a, a shortcut into plugging people into caring and sort of telling them where they are on and like, oh yeah, I'm here. I want to get here. This is exactly what I want to do. If I want to get my muscle up, I can see the muscle up way down here. But if I backtrack up, oh, I got to start here. And then you can find your way up, right? So there are pathways to power for all of these different things. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, that's the, the biggest thing for me is like answering the question, how do you get somebody, a regular person to be plugged in and interested about getting better? And that is engagement, right? Now they're like, oh, cool. I can get, I, like, I know exactly what I need to work on. Well, what is the, uh, uh, we talk, talked a minute ago about uh, how, uh, you know, back in 2009, 2010, it was a way different ball game than it is now. Sure. Like, like you were talking about, you could get, you just get really excited. This is what happened to me. Like I got just right. excited about this. I'm like, I want to open a gym. Right. right. You know what I mean? Like, and, and you could do that. Right. And you would be successful whether you really tried that hard or not. Right. Back in those days. But nowadays it's not like that. Like, like you need things like this to, because, They'll just go somewhere else. You yeah. Know? I, I, I forgot what my question was now, but, you know, what, what do you think about that difference? What's, what is the difference today and back then? Like, what do you tell a gym owner now? Like, I, I feel like there's still people that are like, man, I love this. I want to open a gym. And they go open a gym and now they're like, oh, man, this. 
just so, kind of sucks. Yeah, the, the number one thing I think with the people that want to open a gym is like at this point, like if you don't, back then nobody knew what, what it was. So it's like a novelty. Nowadays, everyone's pretty much heard and they all have their preconceived notions about what it is. They're like, oh, no, nope, I can't do that. But so you need to have a, like a significant differentiator. You need something to be like, yeah, well, I understand you think that, but here's now this and this solves all those problems that you have. And that's like, you know, having some system, something that you can show people is a big, it's a, but besides that though, when someone's opening a gym nowadays, you definitely need to understand the basics of business. Right. You know, so it's like, in the early days of like, uh, like franchises and stuff, the franchise nowadays, if you're going to open a franchise, everything is freaking so dialed. Every aspect right. is so yeah. dialed. I'm going to take, I'm going to take a regular person. I'm going to plug them into a business in order for that person to be successful. You have to give them no wiggle room. It's like, put, put this paper up on the thing. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's all you got to do. You know, yeah. like you got to sit down. There's no, but with a gym, you have somebody come in and they don't even know the first thing about anything. And now it's like, how am I supposed to, what am I just going to have a fun workout in a community after two or three years, you're burnt. You've been coaching too many times. It's not, you know, so it's like, it's a much different environment. You need systems in place. And this is why places like gym ride and two brain and these, these companies that help gyms put systems into place are so important. And those things are even, those have to be done before someone does something like a level method because if you don't have any of these foundations in place and you just go and try to slap something on the wall, it's not even going to work. Right. right. You got to, so yeah. the very first step is getting these fundamental business concepts and anybody who wants to open a gym, that's number one, get like, you have to have a team, you have to have processes, you have to have systems, you know, it can't be just, let me shoot from the hip and hope. <laughs> right. Uh, well, let's talk a little bit about productivity. Cause that's, I saw a couple of things on your website that, piqued my interest that I hadn't heard before. For I, sure. wanted to, I wanted to ask you about it. Um, you have on there developing a useful getting things done framework. Oh yeah. So do, are you familiar with getting things done? I'm not. I'm, I don't so, think I so getting things done is a, uh, it's GTD for short. It's a, it's a world of, of productivity. Get people. It's a book written by a guy named David Allen. Okay. So David, David Allen, he, back in the 70s and 80s, uh, I mean, mainly the 80s and then in the 90s and now further, he has developed a framework of um, how to deal with the amazing amount of crap that is always coming into our lives. And it's a, a, a five steps. So you have like, first you have to, like number one is capturing. So if, if I'm like, hey, dude, can you do this for me? And you're like, sure, I'll do that for you. But you don't capture it. You don't actually write it down somewhere. That's like phase one. Without that capturing, it's going to be in your, sub, it's going to be in your subconscious. It's just right. going to be bouncing around in there and it's going to add stress. So like number one step is to have a single location for capturing. So that, that's like a, now each step in this, in this phase is just a way of like setting up buckets Mm -hmm. So when things get captured, then you move them into buckets, but that's what the GTD are getting things done. What that's what the, the fundamental framework is, is how do you deal with all, it being inundated with all this stuff and how do you organize it and then operate effectively? I gotcha. And so do you, do you teach that kind of stuff to people or, or do you I, I teach it? Um, I teach it to my team and like people that I work with a lot. I like, I would like to do consulting eventually, but there, I just don't have like all of my time is there, but yeah, it's, it's so, if I could give somebody a, the, the advice to read that book, the only problem is that it is extremely comprehensive. It, it's like, so it, like you could go down it forever and it's like, damn, you know, so you almost just need someone to teach you how to do yeah, like, like, Hey, give me a system. <laughs> like, let me just get something in place. Right. Well, what about the uh, advanced OmniFocus? Because that didn't register with me either. So OmniFocus is a, uh, is a program. It's, it's software that is um, really built for getting things done. It's built for the framework. Oh, okay. But so it's a digital version. So th originally the GTD is, is really meant for analog. So you have like, you know, fo file folders and you have all this stuff, but OmniFocus is software version to help you manage all of your stuff. So my OmniFocus system 
has all of the projects that I'm working on, everything, it, there, there are tags, it's all nicely confined. So when I'm working on a day-to-day -day basis, I can pull up pretty much anything that I ever need. It's right there because it's, I mean, it, it's a, again, it's a, a, a tough system to build, but very, very powerful once you have it up and running. Hmm, nice. Um, so speaking of day-to-day -day basis, uh, one of the things I like to do is talk to people about what their days are like. I know, I know I heard you say that Tuesdays were your interview days where you check in with people and stuff like that, but what is, what do your normal days look like if you want to run through a week? Yeah. So Mondays, uh, Mondays are like a more of a deep work day. So, um, where I have project work. So I think time blocking and planning out your week is super important, but it's, it's just time to work on these bigger projects to move these projects measurably forward. Tuesdays are meeting days where I, we try to do all sort of like, I do team meetings, level method meetings, we do marketing, sales meetings, all sort of throughout the day. And then um, Wednesdays are a maintenance day. So maintenance day or a buffer day, I call it, it depends on who you talk to, these different ways of thinking about it. But I, I think of it as a maintenance day where I just catch up on all sorts of loose ends. I work on like, you know, if I have to do food shopping or if I have to do anything that is going to help me like be set for the rest of the week and into the next week. Um, I do on Wednesdays, on Wednesdays, Thursdays are my truly deep work day where the whole day is dedicated solely to just, uh, I, used, I used to do Pomodoro's much, much or timing. Yeah. So timing everything, my whole day, just 14 Pomodoro's right through the, okay. end. um, and then Fridays are sort of a hybrid day where I'll do um, deep work or we have, we have webinars every third Friday. So I'll do um, the webinar prep and stuff like that, but it's either deep work or a half maintenance. And then Saturday is a half work day. So I work for half of the day on, on project stuff and then loose ends and everything. And then uh, Sunday is my planning day. So my like weekly review day. So I'll sometimes I do it on Saturday, but where I now take a look at everything that we have going on, sort of close all the loose ends and then plan the next week. Do you have an app that you use for the Pomodoros? Um, I've used a lot of different apps. I have uh, on, this, on this watch right here, uh -huh. I have just a, a little app that does Pomodoro timer. Oh, okay. So I just do it on my, on my I watch. I think you can actually buy a little tomato. That, that's yeah, like I have one. Oh, you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of a nerdy thing for sure, but the Pomodoros, are, they're so helpful. And you've done them? Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. There's yeah. so, I mean, for procrastination and for to just get that into the work, you cannot be Pomodoros, you know? Yeah. I love it. Um, what about, what about personally? What about training? Like I'm sure you work out every day. Um, yeah. What, so what time do you get up in the morning? That kind of thing. Um, I'm up between four thirty and five. Most days, every day starts with, this is going to sound kind of, I don't know how this sounds, but every day starts with a 30 minute meditation, 30 minutes. I've been doing this for a, 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 just over a year now. And it was a very tough practice to get in place, but yeah, 30 minutes, then it's breakfast, sort of getting stuff together. Well, I want, um, hold on a second, I'm gonna stop you because I wanna know more about the 30 minutes and how that, where that came from. And do you, is, it, is it guided with an app or do you just do it yourself? Or where did that come from? Um, it, like, so I've, I've been interested in meditation for years and years, and I've had various practices for different amounts of time. It's been one of the hardest things to do consistently. And um, I'm, I'm a big like habit guy. Like I, I've always tried to have all these different routines and these different habits. And about a year and a half ago, like I had this like moment of awareness where I'm like, I'm trying to do too many things. I'm trying to do like a morning routine that has 50 freaking things, but I can't even do meditation like, you know, consistently. Right. So I eliminated everything and I just put all my focus on just getting this meditation installed. And I, I did that. Um, I was reading a book called, uh, what is the book called? It's by Gopi Krishna. It's a book on, um, on uh, Kundalini, I think it's called Kundalini. But he, this guy talks about a an experience that he had of, of his awakening. But he did like this ultimately simple meditation every morning for like for an hour every morning for like you know twenty years, and it was just it was concentration, totally concentrated, single point concentration on the top of the head, and he would visualize a a lotus flower that was like 
filling with light, just like expanding with light. And that's all he did. That's what he was doing. So I read this book and I'm like, not that I want to be enlightened or anything, but I'm like, oh, that's pretty damn simple. You just think about one thing, right? hold it. And so I started doing that. I started just like, I'm just going to, and honestly, I was thinking, oh, I'm going to do a Lotus. This is going to sound really funny and weird. <laughs> I couldn't, I, I didn't know. I couldn't visualize a Lotus flower. I'm like, <laughs> It's like, I don't even know what that looks like. And I was having, so I, I visualized an orange, just <laughs> it was great, whatever I could think I of where it. I could really hold it. And after the course of about three months, then I just started focusing on a point. So I do that appointed meditation, either like in my forehead or in the middle of my head, where I'm just, I just try to hold onto it, like clench my mind onto it. And it, it'll go off and come back and go off and come back. But I feel like, it really does hone my concentration ability. Like it is a muscle. And I feel like right. that has developed significantly over the past year or so, just from keeping it very simple and not giving myself any excuses, you know, all right. right. I, I do a, I do a 10 minute one, but it's guided with like an app on my phone, you know, yeah, yeah. I've been doing that for probably six months and that even that's hard. I can't imagine 30 minutes. You know, yeah, it's, it's weird. I have a timer on my watch and every, I'll tell you every single morning, I'm like, ah, oh, damn it. I don't really want to do it. <laughs> right? And I'm like, but I set the timer and I just sit there and I, and I get it done. And but usually before I know it, the timer goes off. It's like, it doesn't feel like 30 minutes. Um, but it's, uh, it, it, it's not sexy at all. It's not, you know, it, it, I think the idea of meditation a lot of times is very cool. It's like, Ooh, wow. Meditation. But in, anybody who's ever done it. And I mean, we've experienced it. It's freaking not fun. Yeah. It's not easy. It's, it's, uh, and it's not sexy at all. It's like pretty damn boring. It's, uh, but I can definitely tell a difference when I don't do it. Like if I skip, if I get up and skip it, and I'm like, oh, I'm not going to do that. They don't have time to do that today or whatever. Right. Yeah, yeah. It makes a difference in my day. You yeah. Know, I, I, I catch myself around like noon going, man, you're being an asshole today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? and like, just training, you're just training your mind, you know, like you're in control. That's right. like a, that's a huge one. So after that, after your 30 minute meditation, you eat breakfast and then. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I've held different routines. The, the thing that I do not waver on is the meditation. So it's 30 minutes up out of bed, no matter what, every single day. But I've, you know, I've put in like, I'll write sometimes for 20 or 30 minutes, or I'll do some stretching or whatever, like, they, they kind of flow in and out. But um, then it's breakfast. And um, I usually listen to like podcasts and stuff, news podcasts, politics, primarily, because I'm just oh, kind of well, what's your what's your go to news podcasts? Um, I listen to like NPR politics and like the daily, I, I try to get a nice swing of different political views. Sure. I don't really have too much of a, an opinion. Honestly, I don't, I'm, I'm just fascinated by politics. Yeah, me <laughs> you know, too, man. I, 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 I'm on, I'm on Twitter way too much reading the pol political stuff. It's, it's just, <laughs> it's just, I'm just fascinating. I mean, you can't help but just be like what is going on right yeah it's like this <laughs> drama it's like this, this adult, adult drama you know and so i i'll do that for a little while and then we have a stand-up uh, most mornings we have a stand-up call so we'll do it and then i'll plug into my day and then just go through my day every night uh i do like five minutes of journaling this is something that i've done for many uh, many years now one of the most valuable things that I do is just recapping my day. It also really hones your memory ability because you got to think through your day, you know, right. like visualize. And it's, it, it, at first it was very difficult for me to do that, but it's, it's gotten better over time. Um, but yeah, those, th those pretty much lay my, lay the foundation for my, for my routines. Do you, do you leave your house and go somewhere to work? What, where do you, do you have an office at the gym or? Yeah. So where I am right now, this is a, the reason it looks so weird is because it's a soundproofed little work uh, station that uh, is built in Sean's garage. So, okay. so th th this is our, this is the, the headquarters, sort of the hub of all of our work. And um, so I come here most mornings and then I'll work and, you know, we have, there's a stand-up desk and, you know, we just kind of, I'll take breaks from standing and sitting, go outside. In the Pomodoro breaks, right, those five minutes, yeah. you know, walk around, disconnect for a little bit, then come back to work. And that's sort of like try to keep that nice rhythm throughout the whole day. Nice. Well, um, what, what about the future? What, 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 do you, what are your goals for your business, for yourself? Like what, what do you 
focused on now? I mean, for me, the, the big things is just growth, right? Growth in, in, in every level. So like personal growth, but business growth, like really overcoming the, the challenges that, uh, that show themselves every day and, you know, ch challenging myself to develop as a leader. Um, but we want, I want to get to a thousand gyms and you know, we have specific concrete goals, but it, a lot of it is, is systems building. This is sort of where uh, I've gone to with the way that I think about things, systems and automations for everything. And I look at habits as a, as a set of automations. So you can install these things into your life. You can install these things into your business. They require maintenance. So a lot of the, I, I don't really have like, you know, I think more of the processes. I'm sure you'd probably like this too. We think of the day-to-day -day processes that will inevitably lead to the outcome. Right. And for us, it's the growth, you know, it's the, the growth of the business. But it, there are individual things like managing our workload, managing stress, maintaining balance, making sure that working out, not neglecting our bodies, you know, all those sorts of things is super important. All right, I got one more question. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite movie? Ooh, I, I heard you talking about when you're in high school, you were trying to make this big giant database of, of movies. And yeah, I, that, I mean, that's a tough, I, that's a very tough question for me. I like a lot of different movies. I don't have one that kind of, that sticks out. But I, I the, the thing about that, the thing about that story with accumulating, I am an information hoarder, yeah. like any sort of information, like, I would just fill, give me courses and e-learning courses and everything. And I just want to audio books and everything. I just want to just get all of it into my head. Um, I don't know. Troy is up there for sure. Okay. Uh, yeah. I would say probably Troy. Like if okay. I was going to be pinpointed. That's but, a good one. Yeah. yeah. All right, man. Listen, I really appreciate you giving me this time today. It's very nice. Course, man. To it's great to meet you. And I'll yeah. probably think of a million other things I want to talk to you again about. So Yeah, dude, let me know. I'm always I'm always down. All right, man. Well, uh, listen, have a good evening and I'll talk to you again soon. Awesome, dude. I'll talk to you soon. See ya. Thanks.